Jana Green was 18 years old when she took her first drink of alcohol. I had six in a row that day. And I remember thinking, if this is how people feel when they drink, why isn't everybody drunk all the time? The daughter of teenage parents, Jenna felt like a disappointment, as if she were responsible for the problems in her parents' lives. My mom was very young, and I felt like maybe she would have had a, a better life had she not had me. It was a very chaotic household. At some point in my childhood, I decided that I would just be really good. That would somehow make things okay. Jana excelled at school and always behaved. She also joined a church youth group and eventually professed faith in Christ. But even that became a way to make herself look good. I could do this. I could be good and not do drugs and not drink and stay chaste and bring my Bible to school. Despite her constant pursuit of perfection, little changed at home, leaving her unfulfilled and exhausted. I had an opportunity to have a drink for the first time in my life, and I was just so spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally toast at that point. It was that moment of just forget it. I'm just, I'm gonna take a drink. It was automatically um, an alcoholic mindset. It made me feel just other than anxiety ridden, other than worried about my family. It just made me feel what I perceived as normal how a normal person would feel. Soon, Jenna was partying and drinking every night, often to the point of passing out. Her faith seemed to no longer matter. I've got this, I've got this under control, and I just sort of avoided Christ for a while. When Jenna later married, she stopped partying. Instead, she drank at night, hiding it from her husband. I just wanted to be alone with my drug of choice, drink however much I wanted, not be accountable to anybody for it, and it could be a secret. She finally found a reason to quit when they decided to start a family. Within three years, she was raising two daughters. I wanted to be a mom more than I wanted anything in this world. It felt natural for me to give up that one thing that had been my everything because I was preparing for what would be my everything. I had a purpose. She didn't touch a drop of alcohol for six years, but by then, the pressures of a failing marriage and responsibilities of motherhood had brought back the anxiety and pain of her childhood. One night after putting the kids to bed, she decided just one drink wouldn't hurt. I poured a glass of wine and had um, the entire bottle. It felt great to have the numbness that was so familiar to me. That scene would repeat itself every night for the next three years. Jenna was powerless to break the cycle of dependence, even for the sake of her daughters. If I could have gotten sober for them, I would have gotten sober for them. Because every day I would wake up and say, I'm not gonna have wine tonight. And every single day, I would have wine that night. And then the old feelings of shame and guilt and just really self-loathing started to affect my spirit in a, in a big way. Her drinking was also taking its toll physically. Then on January 3rd, 2001, Jana realized she needed Jesus to intervene. I found myself on my own bathroom floor, bawling and crying and totally at the end of myself. And I said, okay, Jesus, I can't do this myself. I have been trying to do this myself. I give it to you. I give it to you completely. And I felt his presence more tangibly than I feel yours right now. He was there with me. He was crouched down on the bathroom floor with me. There was no denying that he was going to redeem me. He was going to redeem everything. With God's strength and the support of AA and Celebrate Recovery, Jana overcame her addiction and has been sober now for 15 years. As a writer and blogger, she ministers to others dealing with alcoholism. Jana is grateful that even at her worst, she found love and acceptance through Jesus Christ. Growing up and having accepted that he is the savior of the world is a lot different 
than um, claiming him for your personal friend and, and inviting Holy Spirit to take up the space that alcoholism left. I'm forever asking for more Holy Spirit. That's really all I need.